For my next trick, I will take this camera apart and I'm gonna show you all the different components that are inside that you're gonna need if you're buying this piece by piece. So I'll just completely disassemble this. All right, there you have it. That's the simplest kit there is. So taking away the lens, that's everything that composes the body and the film back. Here's the actual camera body itself. And this piece right here cost me 20 bucks. You can find these more commonly for about $40. Mine was scratched, so I had to end up painting it. So it's so cheap that I never even planned selling it again. So I didn't really care that it's painted red. Um, you're also gonna need a focusing screen. There's six different screens and they differ by what type of focusing they have in the center. So this piece just gets set straight on the camera like that. Next up for the film back, this is something that I haven't shown you before. This is the actual rotating back adapter piece. And because this is for Pro S, it actually has uh, foam seals, kind of difficult to do that. It's got foam seals that prevent any light loss from going one position to the other. And there's just two little metal buttons up on the top that you're supposed to press in if you want to be able to lift these things up so that you can change the magazine. What is the magazine? And this is kind of confusing because sites that don't have pictures, it won't really make sense. They say magazine holders and magazines. As an entire unit, you would call this a film magazine. However, this is the actual film holder. So the advantage of doing that split, one, it'd probably be difficult to load film if you didn't have that split apart because you load film by putting it in here and repping it all the way around and then putting it in. You have to like somehow feed it in something else if it didn't come apart. The advantage of having this thing separate as well from the camera anyway, other than being able to change out many different kinds of film sheet holders and such and my Polaroid back, you want more of these just because you can have them in special light type bags. The advantage to having one of these is that you've got it already loaded with film that's been exposed. You put it in your changing tent, you lift it up out of here, and then you don't have to take the film out of it at the time. All you gotta do is lift it up out of there, take another one of these, pull it out of a light tight bag that's already been loaded with film, you pop it in, and then you're ready to shoot. And then you go back into your bag, you're back into your changing tent. You take that one out, you put it into a light tech bag, and you take out another one that's in a bag. It's already preloaded. You throw it in, and then you're ready to shoot. So all you have to do is get multiples of these, and you don't have to spend any time actually putting the film around and pre-winding it. You can do that all ahead of time. So that's why you'd want multiples of these. Or this doesn't really make it much more expensive. So you could just have them all pre-set up with dark sides. This one actually doesn't have a dark side. It's sort of a pain. It costs 10 or $20 to replace, and this thing only cost me like 20 or 30 bucks to begin with. And you really need one, otherwise you can't take it off your camera without it totally making the frame clear if it's a piece of slide film. Um, so you need one of these to be able to attach the 120 or the 220 backs. You're also gonna need one of these waist level finders. This one is foldable and it comes with this little diopter in there. You can rotate this out and change it with several others. There's uh, six other settings from plus one to negative three diop that you could change out in there. Um, this one is foldable. However, there's one that is a solid with that magnifying glass in the center of it. There's also a sport finder, which you can put on top of this and it's just got like a little crosshair so you can follow stuff while you're shooting it without the mirror getting in the way. So as you've already seen in many of my other videos, you just pull that latch down. You look for the little rectangle shape is on the top of this and that goes up on the top like so, push this in, make sure these are pulled out. If they're not, you push these little pieces of metal in order to pull that out. You make sure this thing is closed. Set that in there, push the two tabs sideways. And you hear that little click, these metal tabs are sticking out and it's good to go. As long as your dark side is out, you can take the photo. If it's in, it blocks this little shutter piece. If your dark slide's in, it'll block the movement of that little thing right there. Because this is a little tab on the inside of this, which you can actually remove on purpose by pulling this multiple exposure thing. 
Another thing to note, since this is an accessory video, this is this little adapter piece. Some cameras need it. I don't know whether it's SZ or the Pro Z needs it, but for, these are both KL lenses and they both come with this little filter lens piece. And on the Pro S, yeah, that doesn't work. So you have to take off this little adapter piece if you want to be able to actually fit your lenses onto this camera.